Good morning everybody and welcome to Hasbury Christian Fellowship. It's Sunday the 24th of January and it's lovely to be with you all this morning. This morning our service is going to be a little bit different to usual because it is the week of prayer for Christian unity. Usually in normal times uh, we have a united service with all the churches in Hales Owen on this Sunday that falls in the week of prayer for Christian unity. Obviously, this year we're not able to gather together for a service. So, uh, Shaw Coleman, who is the uh, minister at Carter's Lane Baptist Church, has put a service together with uh, people reading and praying from the different churches in Hales Owen. Uh, and this morning we're going to be joining in with that service, watching that service together on our, uh, as part of our service. Before that starts, we're going to sing a few songs together and uh, enjoy some worship and praise together. So as we're thinking about the week of prayer for Christian unity, let's start by singing the song, Come, People of the Risen King. We are joining with people, not just in our own church, we are joining with people in the churches in Hales Owen, in the churches around the UK. We are joining with people in churches around the world. Uh, in our worship, in our praise. And um, that's what the week of prayer for Christian unity really reminds us of. So let's sing together. Come, people of the risen King. Oh 
That's, that's brilliant. Let's pray together. Rejoice, rejoice. And Lord, we thank you that we can know that we are joining with Christians around the world in rejoicing, in praising you, in worshipping you this morning. Lord, we know that we are also joining with Christians around the world in times of hardship. And Lord, we pray that as Christian people, we will unite to see your kingdom built here on earth as in heaven. Lord, we pray that uh, the divisions in our theologies, in our understanding of your word will not keep us apart in terms of our love for one another and our support of one another. And that where we disagree, we will be able to do so without falling out over things. Lord, we pray that we will all be working together for you. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are facing the hardship of persecution. And this seems to be something that we seem to be reminded of a lot recently. Those that are suffering persecution as well as dealing with the uh, COVID virus. Lord, have so much to deal with and we pray for your strength, for your mercy, for your grace, for a real sense of your presence, for our brothers and sisters around the world, wherever they are, whatever they're going through. And Lord, this morning we bring to you also the other churches in Hales Owen. For each one of them, Lord, we pray that you will bless. It's, it's difficult in our church buildings not being able to open and uh, many of us are worshipping online and in different ways to usual. And we are aware that some are not able to join in with those things. Some are not able to access services online. Some are lonely. Some are struggling with mental health issues. Lord, for all of these, we lift them to you. But we pray that as churches together in Hales Owen, that we will be there supporting one another, uplifting one another, encouraging one another, bringing your gospel, your kingdom, your love to the people of Hales Owen. Lord, thank you for this time that we can share together today. And we pray that as we uh, worship and think together with the other churches in Hales Owen, that you will bless us and encourage us, Lord. Amen. Um, we're going to sing another song together. The focus of the week of prayer for Christian unity this week has, has been very much about how we work together in supporting others, in supporting other people. Um, and I'd like us to sing an action song before we join in the, the United Service this morning. I would like us to sing, Jesus went out of his way, out of his way, out of his way to help others and then we sing so let's go out of our way and as we sing that together and as we think of the things that Jesus did and our call to be like Jesus to do the things that he did um, let's let's sing this and be challenged to live as Jesus lived and the way that he wants us to live let's sing together Jesus went out of his way Did you give me a drink, an outsider? Did you welcome me, or did you turn me away? Jesus went out of his way, out of his way, out of his way to help others. Jesus went out of his way, out of his way, out of his way to do right. So let's go out of our way, out of our way, out of our way to help others. Let's go out of our way, out of our way, out of 
Excellent. Hope you're not too out of breath after that. And now we are going to join in with this act of united worship, this united service together. Hello everybody, welcome to this service for the week of prayer of Christian unity for churches together in Hales Owen. My name's Shaw, Shaw Coleman, I'm the minister of the Baptist Church at Carters Lane and I'm delighted to welcome you. The course of this service is following the booklet which you may or may not have seen, it doesn't matter if you haven't seen it because it will make sense as we go along and the intention is that it will flow right through the three different vigils that make it up. Hope you enjoy it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this year the theme of the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, chosen by the sisters of the community of Grandchamp in Switzerland is, Abide in my love and you shall bear much fruit. It is the great desire of God, expressed by Jesus, that we might come to him and abide in him. He waits for us tirelessly, hoping that, united to him in love, we will bear fruit that will bring life to all. Faced with our differences, we risk withdrawing into ourselves and seeing only that which separates us. But let us listen to how Christ calls us to abide in his love and so bear much fruit. In the three moments of prayer that follow, we remember the call of Christ. We turn to his love, to him who is the centre of our life, for the path of unity begins in our intimate relationship with God. Abiding in God's love strengthens the desire to seek unity and reconciliation with others. God opens us up to those who are different from us. This is an important fruit, a gift of healing for the divisions within us, between us and in the world. Welcome everybody. We at Carter's Lane are delighted to be able to host this week's service of prayer for Christian unity. For those of you that don't already know me, I'm Phil Turley, the Church Secretary at Carter's Lane. Um, it's a strange time, isn't it? Uh, but I'm sure you'll agree that we're all finding very different ways of doing things together. This service being one of them. I'd like to express thanks to, to Shaw uh, for leading the, the service for us. And I know he's particularly grateful to all those who've contributed towards the three parts of the service. So thank you for that. I'd now like to start by leading us in prayer. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are the vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person. And yet too often the differences in others make us afraid. We withdraw into ourselves. Our trust in you is forsaken. Enmity develops between us. Come and direct our hearts towards you once again. Grant us to live from your forgiveness, so that we may be together and praise your name. Amen. You who call us to be praised in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of the world and among all peoples. We sing your praise in the midst of creation and among all creatures. We sing your praise among suffering and tears. We sing your praise among promises and achievements. We sing your praise in the places of conflict and misunderstanding. We sing your praise in the places of encounter and reconciliation. We sing your praise in the midst of rifts and divisions. We sing your praise in the midst of life and death, the birth of a new heaven and a new earth. You 
who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth. Glory to you. John 15, 1-4 I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. This is the word of the Lord. The reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learnt from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us, you invite us to receive your friendship and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is ever more complete. God of life, you call us to be praise in the midst of the world and to welcome one another as a gift of your grace. May your loving gaze, which rests upon each person, open us to receive each other just as we are. God, you who gather, you knit us together as one vine in your Son, Jesus. May your loving spirit abide in us at local church and community meetings and ecumenical gatherings. Grant that together we celebrate you with joy. God of the one vineyard, you call us to abide in your love in all we do and say, touched by your goodness, Grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes and workplaces. May we bridge rivalries and overcome tensions. Amen. Very often we think of prayer as something we do, an activity of our own. In this short time, we're invited to an interior silence and to turn aside from all the noise and concerns of our lives and thoughts. As we hear the Grand Champ community singing Lumiere de Dieu, the light of God, we are called to abide and rest in God's love.
1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 to 13. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there is no division among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Holy Spirit, you create and recreate the church in all places. Come and whisper in our hearts the prayer which Jesus addressed to his Father on the eve of his passion, that they may all be one, that the world may believe. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, Light the fire of your love in us, that suspicion, contempt, and misunderstandings cease in the church. May the walls that separate us fall. Holy Spirit, consoler of all, open our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation, and bring us back from our wandering. Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, give us poverty of spirit so that we may welcome the unexpectedness of your grace. Holy Spirit, you never abandon the men, women and children who are persecuted for their fidelity to the gospel. Give them strength and courage, and support those who help them. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. The Lord calls us to be united among ourselves. He gives us his peace and invites us to share it. As we abide in Christ, we abide in Christ together. Unusually, it is difficult to exchange the peace in a virtual environment. But let's be quiet for a moment and give thanks to God for our brothers and sisters in Christ. For though we may not see each other right now, we know that we are one in him. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 12. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and the Lamb. They were wearing white robes, and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing round the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this third vigil, we're encouraged by the people who organised this uh, service, the Grand Champ community in Switzerland, to, to do something that we can't do virtually. They suggested that 
a number of people from different churches each have a, an unlit candle and they're in a circle and on the edge of that circle and they make their way to the middle of the circle where there is a, a single candle that's lit and they can light their candles from it. And if that single candle in the middle represents God, then it makes the point that as we draw closer to God, we actually draw closer to one another. And if we're abiding in Christ, that's indeed what we're doing. But it does seem that having drawn closer to one another, we mustn't become a holy huddle. We have got to turn round. We can link our arms. We can share the light that we now have. But look out to the world, the world of people and all their needs and the created world and the care it needs as well. For abiding in Christ is something which draws us together, makes us complete. Uh, over a period of time, just like the vine that grows to maturity, it's not a switch, it's an event. So our faith together will enable us to grow and to impact those around and our world around. And we do it together. OK, it's a virtual world at present. And so many of us have found new ways of keeping in touch with each other. Indeed, in many ways, those interesting bits of social media, for example, have meant we've been talking to more people, that we've been able to attend more events. And fascinatingly, we are drawing closer to each other because of a shared need. We know that coronavirus can affect anybody. It doesn't pick and choose. And so, at the same time, we both have to be carers for one another and people who have to be cared for by each other. Do you know the hymn, Brother, Sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you? Well, that sentiment's absolutely right. But the last verse is very interesting because it also has the idea, give me the grace to let you be my servant too. That we can't imagine we can do it all on our own. Abiding in Christ means abiding in the body of Christ with his people wherever we are. May we all know God's blessing. Let us pray. God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We sing your praise for the gift of our many cultures, expressions of faith, traditions and ethnicities. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustice and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion and fear of those not like ourselves. Merciful God, you have shown us in Christ that we are one in you. Teach us to use this gift in the world so that believers of all faiths in every country may be able to listen to each other and live in peace. O oh Jesus, you came into the world and shared fully in our humanity. You know the hardships of life for people who suffer in so many different ways. May the spirit of compassion move us to share our time, life and goods with all those in need. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Holy Spirit, you hear the fury of your wounded creation and the cries of those already suffering from climate change. Guide us toward new behaviours. May we learn to live in harmony as part of your creation. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Thank you to everybody for taking part in today's service and glad that you were able to be with us too. The final prayer, the final blessing from our booklet says this, be one that the world may believe. Abide in God's love 
go into the world and bear the fruits of love. And if you have the words we can say together, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and all peace in faith, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay safe, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye-bye now. It's encouraging to be able to do things like that together, isn't it? Um, let's finish that time by singing one more song together this morning. Let's uh, sing together, Thy Kingdom Come. This hymn, written to a well-known tune, was written earlier this year um, during uh, between Ascension and Pentecost, it was is the time that it was written for, and uh, it was written with with thought and the aim of bringing churches together. Thy kingdom come, uh, Lord, teach us how to pray. Let's sing this together. Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray. For
and let's finish our time this morning by saying the grace together. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning.